welcome to the final review segment of the Three Quarters Podcast, your official podcast for the 2018 Rugby Africa Gold Cup. Also remember to jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan to support the only African team uh, that's looking to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. I'm Dumi Modafio. And I'm Nara Kamuya. So final review segment. Uh-huh. Tournament done and dusted. Yep. <laughs> that is the Rugby <laughs> Africa Gold, Gold Cup. Cup. Uh-huh. <laughs> so um, we're going to look at the organization, you know, mm-hmm. what could have gone better, mm-hmm. the performance of the teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, basically yeah. all of that. Yeah. I think for a tournament of its magnitude, mm-hmm. the um, team at you know Rugby Africa mm-hmm. has done very well. Mm-hmm. Um, minimal, you know, complaints. Mm-hmm. Uh, very few things went wrong that we know of. Yeah. Um, I think they've done a very good job. Uh-huh. Um, you know, getting all these countries involved, all the unions involved, mm-hmm. flying people around, that is referees and other match you know, officials, mm-hmm. citing commissioners mm-hmm. and all of that. I yeah. think they've done a very good job in terms of performance of the teams. Yeah. I think some teams, yeah. and, and we know who they are, yeah. <laughs> you know, teams such as um, Namibia mm-hmm. put in a lot of work yeah. towards this tournament. Mm-hmm. They knew what they wanted from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there are teams that didn't do so well. Yeah. We know, you know, teams like uh, Zimbabwe, yes, pumped a lot of money into it, mm-hmm. uh, prepared a lot, but maybe just didn't have the personnel Mm -hmm. um, to get to where they needed to Mm -hmm. Uh, but all in all I think that was a very good tournament Mm -hmm. things to take away for some teams preparation is key yeah I mean look just looking at at um, you know the Kenyans looking at the Moroccans maybe the Tunisians Mm -hmm. um, you know you at some point I I remember you mentioned it was Ramadan so Mm -hmm. you know if you're a Muslim Mm -hmm. then Training isn't going to be exactly. as as you know, yeah, as yeah. hard as as, as um, maybe the Namibians would have trained. Yeah, but um, well, <laughs> you you give what you have. True, so. true. Uh, I I don't. I I the way I want to look at it, I'm going to split it into a couple of things. I'm going to look at performance of teams. I'm going to look at broadcasting. I'm going to look at corporate partnerships and and the fans, of course. The, yeah. the, the, the second biggest stakeholders of the game, I yeah. say, after the players. Mm-hmm. So from a performance standpoint, I agree with you. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Namibia are, are eons ahead of everyone else because of, I think, the preparation and the investment they've put into the game of 15s. And we see what it happened. You you, what, what's that saying? You reap what you sow? Yep. And that's exactly what's happening in Namibia. That's the reason why they were able to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in Japan in 2019. They've been doing that consistently mm-hmm. for the last 15, 20 years or thereabouts. So um, it's, it's all because of just that, you know, um, um, preparation and, and, and discipline, because it's a lot of discipline, yep. also, I think so. So that's, that's why I think Namibia are years ahead of everyone else. There's a lot of potential in the other teams, in three, especially three teams, Z- uh, Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Uganda. Yep. For Zimbabwe, I think it's more to do with personnel just now. I think they have a brilliant coaching setup with Peter De Villiers there. They've pumped in a hell of money into the game, but I think the game suffered a lot because of the political situation in the country over the last two or three years. But they're getting back into it, and I, I think three, four weeks, maybe three or four weeks ago, I actually did say that Zim feel like they're building for the next yeah. cycle and not this particular one. Mm-hmm. And if they continue with the momentum that they've set, if they continue the traction that they've set right now, then you can be sure that Namibia, uh, your time at the top is going to be very short. Yeah. It's, it's not, uh, <laughs> yeah. These guys are going to come gunning for you. For, for Uganda, I think it's uh, an issue of uh, lack of resources. And I think uh, maybe uh, the corporate organizations in Uganda need to start thinking about backing their their boys, the rugby cranes, because the potential is there, the talent is mm-hmm. there. In my opinion, they've been the, they've been the most entertaining backline that I've watched this whole tournament. So the talent is there and the potential is there. What also affected them big time in this tournament was the fact that many of their 15s players had to yep. double up as sevens players. As was the same for Zimbabwe for as Zimbabwe. well. Exactly. Yeah. So they need to build on the pool and invest mm-hmm. in the game, game of 15s. And then maybe they can become uh, formidable opponents. For Kenyans, I think they just shoot themselves in the foot each and every time. Um, if you ask me, I think pound for pound, the Kenyans can actually beat the Namibians. With the same preparation, I think they can. Mm-hmm. But they shoot themselves in the foot each and every time. Uh, reason being uh, mismanagement by their union. And that's the biggest problem for Kenya. Uh, that's the only problem they have. It's not that they don't have the talent. It's not that the resources are not there. Some of the Kenyan corporate companies are the biggest taxpayers continent-wide. Yeah. You know, they generate the highest revenue continent-wide. So I just think it's the corruption and the mismanagement that, that's really affecting the game in Kenya. And, and if they can focus on that, then they can be able to, you know, challenge Namibia. For Tunisia and Morocco, Morocco, uh, the only way is up. 
Yep. We've seen a lot of, especially from the technical standpoint and mm -hmm. the knowledge of the game and the rugby IQ, they've been really impressive and everyone has been really happy. They've been the darlings of the tournament, as we've said. And uh, yeah, um, for Morocco, it's, I mean, don't despair the fact that you've been relegated to the Silver Cup. I think you guys are going to be back and you can only build on the experiences. Actually, I think most people want them back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And you can only build on the experiences that you've had. As for Tunisia, um, <laughs> uh, I feel, I just feel that um, uh, the preparation part did not go into it this tournament. I didn't. I don't think that they prepared for this tournament as well as should, they should have. They were lucky with the Zimbabwe game, mm -hmm. uh, the Morocco game. I did. They feel that they grinded it out. So yeah, I feel like they were. Uh, they haven't prepared for this tournament. But they, it can only. It's. It, it can't happen. The, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It. They can't get lucky every time. Yeah. I mean, last year they soaked in a lot of points. Mm -hmm. This year, the same case. Mm -hmm. They won't get lucky again. So they need to start you know, preparing for this tournament a bit more seriously than they have in the past. So that's what I have to say about the performance. I don't know if you have anything else to say. Uh, not, really. <laughs> <laughs> not really much yeah, to add. Yeah. I mean, you're, you've been pretty accurate with the points. Yeah. And we've seen you know, those things happen with uh, every team mm -hmm. um, throughout the tournament. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, preparation is key, obviously, and especially for the teams um, closer to the bottom. Yes. And, and yes, with the Tunisians, yeah. they won't get lucky every time. Yes. Um, I mean, yes, well-deserved win against Morocco. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if Morocco played the way they have been playing throughout the tournament, yes. they would have actually gotten a win in Tunisia. Yep, yeah. yep. So that's, that's to do with performance. Mm -hmm. The other point I had is broadcasting. Uh, you have to give full props to Kwasa Sports uh, in what they've done. And, and the partnership, of course, started with the last year's Africa Gold Cup, the 2017 Rugby Africa Gold Cup. That's when actually the tournament was renamed to the Gold Cup. It used to be Kaka before. But uh, Kwasa coming in on board and broadcasting these games has been exceptional. It's been very good for the game of rugby. We have been able to access these games. I mean, previously, we did not know what was happening outside our local. Nope, Ugandans not until like the next day. <laughs> exactly. The Ugandans didn't know what was happening in Kampala. I mean, outside Kampala, Namibians outside Vindhoek, Zim outside Harare or Bulawayo, Kenyans didn't know what was happening outside Kenya. So yeah, um, it's, 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 I have to give Kweset props. It's, a, it's an exceptional job. Yes, it has affected the schedules. Like mm -hmm. for example, and we'll speak from our experience, uh, in Kenya, the games start at 4 p.m. Yep. So the games have moved to 3 and 2 p.m. But it's only for the greater good. Mm. It's only for the greater good. And Quest of Sports, thank you very much for what you've done over the last two years with the game of rugby. It can only grow mm -hmm. um, from, from there. Definitely. Uh, when it comes to corporate partnerships, um, APO, APO Group, uh, who are the main sponsors for Rugby Africa, I think have done a very good job um, in, in, in organizing the tournament because we've seen, we've seen uh, the level of organization has actually you know, um, going to a different level. Mm -hmm. uh, I know over the weekend on the game, the game between uh, Namibia and Kenya, we saw uh, Namibian president Hage Gainkop Gain was actually there as a fan. You know, uh, in Kenya, we've been seeing a lot of the political class attending these games. Mm -hmm. So it, it it boils down to organization, and organization can only be good if there's money. And that's what we've seen from APO, APO Group. The only thing I would ask is that now Rugby Africa start looking for other corporate partners mm -hmm. because it, 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 it can become too heavy for APO to shoulder all that weight. So uh, Rugby Africa needs to start uh, soliciting for other partners because, like we we're saying, there are very many corporate organizations in Africa who can actually back the game of rugby and the product is very good. Mm -hmm. Rugby Africa have a very, have, have a very good product. So yeah. Um, from a corporate partnership standpoint, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We need to get to the point where now we're starting to think about rugby from a commercial standpoint, where our players can start living off the game because it's a talent they have. Mm -hmm and they're putting in their hard work, so they need to be paid for it. Yep, in terms of like uh, corporate sponsorship, I'll just sort of take a tangent to look at um, basically media mm -hmm. and getting the news out there. And APO has done a lot of that. Oh, yes. And also Kwese being on board um, has um, increase the viewership mm -hmm. of the game. Mm -hmm. Very well done to both of them. Yeah. I mean, everywhere I turned, even from people who I know don't watch rugby, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I hear there's a game today. And you're like, wow, okay. Yes. And back, I mean, in the past, you'd have to tell people that there's a game. Yes. You'd have to tell people I'm not available because I'm watching a game. But yeah. now, Everyone seems to know that you know there was rugby happening, yes. um, and I think that's that's very good, obviously for the game. Oh, yes. And and you know you can only hope it gets better. Oh yeah, you can only hope. It, actually, it will get better. Yeah. With, the right, with the right leadership, it's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. uh, on to my last point, which is about the fans. As you said earlier, on the second st biggest stakeholders of the game, the first being the players. Uh, Kenya and Uganda have led the way in this one <laughs> yeah. uh, in terms of <laughs> the numbers that have attended yeah. the games. I think Kenya having the most. Uh, boisterous crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, um, their stadium, uh, the RFEA grounds, has been packed to the brim each mm -hmm. and every game. 
um, which, which, which can only show you that uh, the game is growing on the continent. In Uganda, Ugandans are known to be a very noisy bunch mm -hmm. and they have shown that uh, this whole tournament, whether the team has been down, whether the team has been up, they've shown, up the, they've shown that this whole tournament and yeah, um, it's it's uh, it's it's admirable when you go to Vindhok, um At least one side of the stand of the Highgate kind of stadium <laughs> is always packed. Yeah, and you're getting a lot of people getting you know the, the locals coming out to support the local game. So that has been good. Zimbabwe has been the same case. Mm -hmm. uh, Tunisia and Mor Morocco not really, but it it can only get better. Yeah, like we have been saying, rugby is the fastest growing sport in the continent. Uh, we have moved from six six unions to thirty eight in a matter of 10 years and this is the second year of Kwese actually broadcasting the game so with that kind of popularity then the fans will start getting into the mm -hmm. game slowly and I'm sure um, in the next 10 years uh, we're going to be having save because we only know about South Africa having field stadiums so yep. I'm sure in the next 10 years it's going to be a different story I mean South Africa don't think you're going to be alone for a very <laughs> long time in this game so yeah that that has been my the, my thinking of the 2018 Rugby Africa Gold Cup. Mm -hmm. It's the second installment of the Gold Cup. Uh, it's the first installment that had a trophy, by the way. Uh, it's been an excellent tournament. We've enjoyed the quality of rugby. Some work needs to happen, uh, but there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. and I, I want to commend each and every person who's been involved in uh, the organization of this tournament and in getting the tournament outside there and in getting the games outside there. Mm -hmm. uh, kudos to you guys. It's been a good it's, Very well done. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's, been a good, it's been a good show. But, yeah. you know, just before we wrap up yeah. uh, on the fans, yeah. um, just one thing, you know, that came to mind while you were talking mm. is, you know, s certain countries have a very large fan base. Mm -hmm. And like Uganda, you'll see their fans traveling with Uganda to Kenya, you yes. know, obviously because Kenya is just next door. Yes. But it would be nice to see if, um, you know, if it's whether it's tour companies travel, you know, yes. agencies yes. come up with, you know, attractive packages. Yeah, because I'm sure there are people who would want to travel to watch these. Oh, games. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. I mean, um, OK, first, before before <laughs> I move on to that point, the first thing I want to say, I also want to commend uh, the Zimbabwe community in Kenya, because uh -huh. I remember for the game against uh, uh, Kenya, they came out in droves and yep. they were very noisy. So I have to commend them for actually coming out and shaking up the crowd in, in Nairobi. But yes, um, would would appreciate if these tour companies can come up with packages because I know from a Kenyan standpoint, very many people want to go watch these games, mm -hmm. but they don't get the chance to do so because we don't know any, we don't have any information about this traveling. So it would be very good if, if we can get that in the future. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just before we wrap up, I'd like to remind people to jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan. There's one African team left. They'd like to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. Uh, remember, you can find us on social media that is by following us on Instagram, liking our page on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'm Dini Madofio. And I'm Ngara Kamuya. And it's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs>